What's up guys? Baker here. I've got a sweet little tutorial about this uh, kind of loading screen I did on my uh, recent one clip edit. And um, I thought it was pretty sweet. And I just want to share it with you. And this is what it looks like. So right here, it's not that cool, but with uh, color correction and a little bit of twitch and movement, it looked a, a little bit better. But I'm going to just go over the basics, especially this loading bar right here. It's pretty sweet. And uh, let's go straight into it. So um, new composition. We'll make this uh, 720p by 1280, 59 frames. And we can make this, I don't know, 15 seconds, depending how long your uh, music intro part is. Alright, so first thing I want to do is kind of uh, make a little bit of text, and I had a warning, and this was Bank Gothic, and we'll kind of scale this up, and uh, center it. Now, with the uh, the curved parts and stuff, that was um, CC Lens, so what happens is, we make an adjustment layer, add on some CC Lens, and then uh, well, and uh, bring this out to like I don't know, pretty close to maybe like 250. Um, if we get close to the edge, it uh, it's close, but it's like like not really close to the edge, but it with the CC lens it is. So just when we're making this, we have to be careful of how far our stuff is going. So. That's that's cool. And then we'll make another new text and say over edit now loading dot 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 and highlight all, scale it down, and uh, kind of fit it in here. Let's let's check again. Adjustment layer on top, okay, so we we'll probably make this warning a little bit bigger. Something like that. That looks cool. Get some warping. Um let's go ahead and make the little bar. So we're going ahead and make a new solid, and instead of making comp size, we're going to make our own size. We're going to make it a thousand by fifty. Okay. So we get this little bar, put this below the adjustment layer, and uh, just pull this down about there. That's cool. And uh, actually, I'm just going to turn off the adjustment layer for now, so we can kind of see what's going on. Um, what I'm going to do is go to the rectangle tool and double click on it and go into the mask properties, set it to subtract, and bring this in with the mask expansion, maybe like negative three pixels or so. So we just get this little bar. So, yeah. And then we're gonna duplicate it, and go into this, this mask, and we're gonna set this to add, but then bring this in even more, so it's got the little inside part. Now, if you notice, we have a bunch of little squares, and they're not individual solids. So uh, how do we do that? Well, we're going to use a track mat. So take the uh, inside part and duplicate it. So this will be, we'll rename this. So this is the outer bar. This is the inner bar. This will be the mat. So on the mat, we're going to go ahead and type in grid. Generate grid on the mat, and um, let's see here the blending mode. Let's see uh, width and height sliders. Um, I think that should be good if we just change the track mat to alpha mat, alpha inverted. There we go. Now we just got to adjust the mat a little bit. So we'll change the height up and the uh, anchor. So we just get these lines. And then just kind of slide this over until it kind of fits, fits your screen, something like that. So if you can kind of see what we did, we just used a track mat to uh, cut off the little lines. And then um, let's we'll start animating a little bit. So we're going to add a linear wipe on the inner bar. And we're going to wipe the other way, so negative 90 for the angle. And we're going to bring this down to here, keyframe that move forward I don't know how long seven eight seconds 
and keyframe this up. Now, it'll be a little bit too uniform. I mean, you can have that. But if I go into the transition completion, hold alt and click on it, we can uh, wiggle this. So we're going to say wiggle, parentheses, maybe one comma, I don't know, 25. That's probably too much, but let's take a look. So it'll go and kind of wiggle and like kind of more random. So probably need to set this down to maybe 10. And um, it just gets a little bit more random. Kind of cool looking, I think. And that's cool. Um, let's, uh, how about the typing of the over edit now loading? That's just a decoder. I use this a lot. Decoder fade in on the over edit now loading. So bring that on. And we see the keyframes if we push EU. Now it'll type on. So I'll probably make this type pretty fast. Type on and it stops. What I'm going to do is actually copy, paste it again. And um, I'll just repeat again, but it goes backwards. So we got to zoom in here right before it starts again. Have this back up to 100. So what this will look like is uh, it will animate from 0 to 100. It will stay 100 and then just pop back to 0. And uh, just kind of loop it like that. So 100, go forward once, down to 0. Go forward, back up to 100. So... And then the warning was kind of blinking. What I did for that is I actually used my synchronizer plugin. Go ahead and search that up. It's an amazing little plugin preset that I made for any kind of uh, pulsing or uh, like, uh, I don't know, pumping effects. And uh, just keyframe the uh, opacity, transit, or whatever it's called. Expression, there we go. Pick whip to the output uh, thingy, pick whip here, slider, boom. And then now we just gotta, we can actually just leave it like that. Pretty cool. Anyways, all automatic stuff. Um, let's bring in the song. So the song was this. And I'll also bring out the overused 34i, 34 ABI numbers thingy. And now we're gonna fit that to comp and set it to screen probably. So just a bunch of randomness going on. And uh, maybe just turn down the opacity just a little bit. Yeah. All right. So with the CC lens, everything's looking good. Reddit now loading. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Uh, turn that off. Um, let's make a new solid. This will be the audio waveform. And make comp size. Boom. Put it down below. And we're going to search up audio spectrum done a tutorial on this already so should be pretty familiar with this and just take the endpoints and put it um, where the loading bar is yeah and then so we'll change the layer to the song and I'll just scoot the song over a lot just so it you know it just looks better I guess I don't even know that should be good. So let's go into the settings here. Um, end frequency will bring this down to like 500. Uh, side A, so we only get the top. And we'll make the height pretty high. So it's like boo, 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 boo. Um, I want to make this like a blue color. Um, frequency bands, probably turn that up a little bit. Maybe the thickness to like five. You guys should know this by now. I mean, I've done a couple tutorials on this. Um, maybe decrease that even more. Get some cool waveform looking things. Um, that's pretty good for that. What I'm going to do is actually duplicate the audio waveform. And then change the second one from digital to analog lines. It gets a little bit of uh, lines at the top. And we we'll probably set these to add to. Add and. Add. And a uh, little bit different waveform, but I think it looks pretty cool, especially with the CC lens. All right, what else do we need? 
Um, the info at the top, so this is pretty cool. So let's make a new solid. And uh, we'll make this 1280 by, I don't know, like 5. This will be a little line. And to make it a little bit smoother, go to your ellipse tool and double click. Okay, and we're just going to push P and kind of just bring this up to the top somewhere. So this is where we got to be careful because with the CC lens, it's going to warp it. And, uh, you know, depending on where your line is, you know, got to make sure it looks good. And uh, I'm going to duplicate it a couple times. Turn the CC lens off. And I'm going to take these and just kind of position them down so it's kind of cascading kind of stuff. Something like that. Make it a little bit more even. So our text is going to go up here. So I'll put in some text. And I'll say edit by Baker. And scale this down. Oops. Boom, boom, boom. Probably a little bit more so it fits. So uh, just fit this in here. Now again, what I'm saying before is be careful because the CC lens will make it go off the page. So just move the edit by Baker in a little bit until it uh, you know, kind of looks pretty good. Put it right there. And I'll duplicate that, change this to clip by, and then you can say like, you know, person. Push P for position and scoot it over here. Turn the CC lens back on to see how it fits. And it fits pretty nicely. All right. So that's pretty good for that. Um, the next line, I'm going to duplicate this one more time. I'm gonna say song dot and then, you know, super cool stuff, song awesome. And uh, just take it and uh, slide it right in here. Probably needs to be scaled down a little bit because uh, going too crazy here. If I turn this back on, I'll probably be off the page. Yeah, just a little bit. So just kind of adjust the size and stuff so it all looks good. But um, that's about it for that. Um, the only thing I want to go over now is the little ring in the background. Oh, and also got these little, little bars. So we'll go ahead and make a new solid real quick. This will be our grid. Main cop size. And we'll search up grid. And uh, you might notice a pattern by now. I've done this so many times. Um, let's see. Width and height sliders. And the width can be like extremely high, like 2,000. Let's scoot this over so that's not showing. Come on. There we go. Height can be 10. And we'll set this to maybe uh, overlay or. And then bring the opacity down. Get the subtle effects. Probably, yeah, probably like 20%. So, get some cool little lines going on. Alright. Makes it look like a screen. It's like a video game. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the ring. So, we're going to make this in a, a new comp. We'll call this the ring thingy. And uh, you can make it the same size, it doesn't matter. But, we're going to make a new solid. And this needs to be a square, so I'll go 720 by 720. <coughs> All right, and uh, double click the ellipse tool, so we get a perfect circle. And what I'm going to do is actually um, double click on one of the points, and then scale it down by holding Shift and Command or Control for PC. So we just get the mask a little bit smaller. Um, what I'm going to do is search up uh, stroke. So we're going to generate stroke on that, and we're going to set this to transparent so we only get the stroke outline. So we're going to make this like a like an orange orange red color. Probably bring the brush size a little bit thicker, something like that. Uh, maybe just a little bit more, I don't know, something like that. Oh, that's all right. We're going to duplicate it. And on the second one, we're going to scale this up until it makes a little bit of a, another ring. And we're going to delete the stroke, actually. We're going to go and type in Vegas. Yeah. Vegas. What Vegas will do is if we change this to transparent, and it makes cool little uh, dotted lines around a mask. So we're going to change this to mask. Okay. 
segments. I'm going to turn this down to like six segments. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Um, color, I'm going to just uh, use the little eyedropper and choose the same color. And change the width up so it looks like that. All right, and we'll probably scale this a little bit down so it's kind of closer, closer to the inner ring. All right, and maybe if you want, make an adjustment layer and add a glow to it so it's not too, you know, perfect. You know, maybe go back to the stroke and uh, the hardness, make it a little bit softer or something. Yeah, that looks good. And uh, what we're going to do is go to the stroke and go to rotation, keyframe, move forward to the end, and then uh, just rotate this, I don't know, a couple times, let's say two. Uh, it's actually going the wrong way, but, you know, it's all right. So it's just going to be kind of spinning. So back into our intro thingy, we're going to bring out the ring thingy. I'm going to bring this out uh, pretty much all the way to the back. There you go. And, um, yeah, pretty sweet. What I'm actually going to do, since I have three of them, and I don't feel like, uh, actually, yeah, you probably could, but, uh, all right, so I'll leave that there, duplicate it, and scale this one down, duplicate it, scale this one down, so there you go, you get your three rings, and what I did was actually, uh, turn the opacity down in the beginning to, like, I don't know, 25, and then when it's finally done loading, around here, it'll power up and turn on at 100% and be super hot, glowy, fire, ready to go. And then the last thing I did was just add a, uh, a go and then made it green using the text color over here. Nice green. And then uh, scale it up. Something like that. Probably a little bit higher. Go! Oh my gosh! Is this underneath the CC lens? No, it is not. Let's do that. Same thing with the grid. That needs to be under CC lens. All right. And uh, that is really just about it. And then I uh, just uh, once it's done loading, uh, cut or trim the go, and I'll just turn on. And that's the loading screen. And that is all I want to go over today. So maybe just a quick color correction, I don't know. Go to looks. Magic bullet looks. And I've probably promoted this before, but me and Adonis have a dual magic bullet looks color correction pack. And it is quite a bit nowadays. And um I used uh oh I don't have it with me, I think. Um, should be in here. Should be Baker Dubstep 3, but I don't see it. Anyways, just use that one. So, cool stuff. Uh, loading screen. Sorry this took a little long, but there's a lot of cool stuff going on. So, uh, yeah. Uh, targeting pack pretty soon. I've been working on it. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, go ahead and please leave a like, favorite, comment, all that good stuff. And until then, I will see you next time. 